Well, there seems to be a uh, a habit and a pattern that human beings have fallen into um, by way of living in the, the societies in which we live, um, in which problems are attacked through the lens of fixes and behavior changes yeah. and doings and prescriptions and activities. And, um, and if we discover the things in human beings' lives that they truly excel at, the things that they really cure themselves of or uh, never really have many problems in, it is those things in which they do not seek prescriptions. Uh, mm-hmm. it, is, it is those things in which they've overcome them or have prevented them instinctively um, because they have understood the situation. It wasn't because they did a bunch of stuff in order to prevent them from the problem. And and so everything in this society uh, is based upon the, the premise and the tenet that one must do in order to achieve, that one must fix in order to arrive at a cure. And quite frankly, cures are really something that is divorced from the psyche of society. Society is far more interested in treatments and uh, oint, ointments and five-step plans and hacks <laughs> and and how-tos and five ways to become happy and be more mindful and be more medit- you know do meditation and and it's all it's all a silly little game that society plays because it because frankly human beings tend to be very cosmetic and they've taught to be they've been taught to be cosmetic and look at things in a very cosmetic level very superficially mm. never really arriving at the source of things and thereby chasing things for their entire lives never really arriving at anything yeah and um i think you also love to say that every fix creates a new problem so i think this goes along with everything that you are saying so um could you also please speak to that well i mean a, a fix is a chase Uh, a fix is an attempt to improve. Um, it, it a fix is always a band aid. The 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 problems that exist are not problems to be fixed. Mm. They they are problems to be understood because they arose from a place. They arose for a reason. Um, and it is in discovering that reason. It's in discovering the source uh, that that problems go away by themselves. If 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 a problem wasn't fixed into creation, it cannot be fixed into oblivion. Mm. And and um, this also goes along with the whole like how to industry, right? Because they always try to to try to 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 fix like surface level things. Yes. Yes. So um, you once said that everything which is not genuine fails when you once spoke about people who want to change their lives. So um, could you also speak to that? Well, everything that is not genuine absolutely fails. Uh, Everything that is done by way of a, of some sort of an activity or five-step plan isn't genuine because the thing that is most crucial to a human being's life, he would never relegate to a five-step plan. Or the four C's or four D's or three C's, right? (laughs) Yes. 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 These are, these are all just, uh, these are all, you know, these are societies sort of dismissing of things that are fundamentally serious. Um, it's, it's a childish way of, um, of looking at things that have real impact upon human lives, uh, and and to blow them off, uh, and and put them into a box of prescriptions and do this and do that, is is the height of unseriousness. I I I think you once gave a great great example and and you said something along the lines like when your hair is like on fire you wouldn't ask like for some <laughs> for some scientific uh, explanation or like uh, some five step plan <laughs> and and when you I I've heard you say this I, I had to laugh so much 
because it was like a great, great example. Yes. Um, so you also like to say like in your work, uh, in your work that, um, everything in every industry is a scam and that we, er that everyone is telling like lies. So, um, could you also like share this, the, 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 your, your thoughts on, on the, this topic, please? You know, the prevailing dogmas and the prevailing beliefs and the prevailing notions that are at the heart of every every industry uh, are not um, beliefs and dogmas and opinions that have any meaning. They are they they don't arise from a place of seeking truth. They are the result of copycatting. They're the mm -hmm. result of of decades and centuries of essentially carrying the party line, continuing on what's all, always been done. Uh, things are never questioned. They're just continued. Yeah. And um, I think uh, a great example was in, in one interview that you gave that, for instance, if you take like everything that is written on, on, on leadership in one blog post and you couldn't differentiate the author because everyone is like saying the same bullshit. So um, on the Internet, like no one has like unique ideas everyone is like telling the same right yes yes i mean if uh if human beings are the same then what they produce is going to be the same <laughs> yeah and um could you also like please speak about like why it is nonsense to learn from like uh, experts um i know like you also love to, to talk about like people being conditioned and having conditioned opinions so um would you please elaborate on that? Well, experts, uh, whether it's an expert or whether it's uh, someone with experience, mm -hmm. whatever it may be, um, it all depends upon the DNA of the human being that you're trying to learn from. It doesn't, it doesn't matter how long he's been in the field because, quite frankly, people who've been for a long time in a particular field, they will understand and and have a better understanding of the mechanical ways of doing things, of where to put the paper clips, and and where the restroom is, uh, and and so, but but they tend to be repeating the same things again and again. So just because you've been in the field for thirty years doesn't make you an expert. It it because chances are you you were probably not the kind of person who was questioning everything for those 30 years. And if you were, then there's something to talk about. Yeah. Um, but, but just by virtue of having been there doesn't make you an expert. It all depends upon the DNA. If someone is a person who has a tendency to reject all ideas until he verifies them for himself, then this is a person that's perhaps worth listening to. Um, but so it all comes down to the human being. It doesn't, doesn't come down to, how long they've been in the field or how many books they've written. It, it depends upon the nature of their thinking. It depends upon the nature of their DNA. Yeah, and I think this goes like um, very against the grain, right? Because like everyone, especially like in my age, like early 20s, mid 20s, they, they try to learn from like all those experts and what everyone is saying and what this guru is saying or that guru is saying. But um, most people don't really question if everything what they are saying is the truth and what you're trying to 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 say is that like most things that um all those gurus and experts trying to teach are like lies right yes but it isn't entirely their fault i mean um so let's not let's not let the audience or the person who is seeking the advice of these experts off the hook uh the 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 truth is that quite frankly, um, the people who are seeking this sort of advice from the gurus and the experts uh, are themselves seeking lies. So they're not serious enough to be seeking the truth themselves. So it's a match made in heaven. So, so, it, so it isn't like these people are all seeking the truth and they're looking for that one person to give them and they're willing to do anything to get it. That isn't the nature of things. That isn't, that isn't the way of most human beings. Mm. So, so it isn't all, all the blame 
it, it would it would not be fair to place it upon the experts because wherever there's a, there's a demand there's a supply and they have good intentions like for the most part i guess oh sure i don't think everyone anyone's malicious and trying to be uh, uh, you know <laughs> trying to give false information it is just that it's just that they're not oriented towards discovering what the true causes of things are yeah and um, you once said that, <laughs> that um, when you go to conference that you get like um, the old soup from yesterday, the leftovers, and that uh, the information, <laughs> the information in like conference is like bullshit. So could 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 you please speak to that for everyone who isn't familiar with your work and um, who is currently listening to this podcast? Well, anything that is done on a mass market scale <laughs> um, in a conference or otherwise, I mean, it's it really that's not where things are really learned um you know i suppose an argument can be made for networking at a conference and meeting someone um you know that might there might be some mutual benefit you know with mm. uh but as for the contents in a conference and you know, people don't become world class by sitting sitting in a conference and taking notes <laughs> that isn't that that isn't how things work and and quite frankly i mean the 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 deepest secrets of any profession are not given upon a conference stage why would anyone do that and quite frankly even sense, yeah. even even if a person gave every secret that they knew on a conference stage even if they did it would not be recognized because the manner in which it would come across would be would be um uh, would be it would be opaque it wouldn't be so easily understandable because one would have to arrive at a certain level of competence and a certain level of dna to even understand what is being said as a result the things that are said in, in conferences are dumbed down and so they have no relevance anyways so it's just a circus <laughs> I love this. You you have changed my whole perspective on like going to conferences and networking events. And I always thought beforehand they are a scam, but um, you you reassured me in this way. So um, um, I would love to hear you speak about like uh, how tos because you, you already spoken a little bit about like how tos and methods and stuff like that. But I think like it's also like a, a very important concept in in your work and and everything that you do and. You totally changed my mindset about the whole how-to industry and methods and the five-step plan and the three C's and the four D's. So um, could you please speak to everyone who's listening why the whole how-to industry is for the unserious and people who are, aren't really dedicated and, um, yeah, just just please speak to that. Well, if no person becomes world-class by following prescriptions, no person becomes world class by following directions. If if, if someone was become was going to become world class by following a five step plan, <laughs> then 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 Picasso could write a book and say how to hold the paintbrush <laughs> and how to paint a painting, and then all the people who wrote the read the book would become Picasso, right? <laughs> it, it, things don't work that way, and so uh, things you know you become world class. First of all, by having a DNA, a DNA of true, genuine desire to to reach a certain point, and that leads to a drive, which uh, which propels someone to dive into the deepest depths of their craft in order to discover, you know, in what ways to uh, to arrive at its highest of heights. It, it you can't just pick up a book and read. 10 steps to become <laughs> successful. Um, wherever you are given a method, you're given a path to mediocrity. Uh, you are given the same method that everyone else is given and everyone else will end up in the same, in the same place. So nothing, nothing of any great value works that way. Um, you cannot meditate your way to enlightenment. You cannot mindful <laughs> your way to enlightenment. You know, you cannot, you cannot, uh, morning routine your way to wisdom. Um, you know you cannot so-called practice your way to world class. It's 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 well beyond those things. It's yeah. those things are very unserious. And what <laughs> once I I heard you explaining this whole concept like in one of your podcasts, I was like, man, 
I never thought about like it, it, it in this way about this whole how to industry and I I instantly knew that everything is a scam so um <laughs> I really love this so um could you also like please um share share your thoughts a little bit about like um is there a way for people like to to cultivate like seriousness or is this like really a dna thing so my heart says it's, it's like a dna thing but but could you also play like uh, please like share your own opinion about that and by by dna i don't mean genetic dna by dna i mean really a um a sensibility dna yeah um exactly uh, it it you know Cultivating seriousness really uh, goes back to and arises from uh, sitting with yourself and discovering what it is that you truly want, where it is that you truly genuinely want to go, um, looking at yourself in the mirror and seeing that for decades all that you have been doing is following one prescription after another, mm. chasing one guru after another, reading the latest book after the latest book. And the recognition of that fact will give you insight into your own levels of unseriousness. Now, it isn't, <laughs> it, it isn't a crime to be unserious. There's no should here. No one is required to be serious. That's that's all personal. It's what it's whatever you want, um, but if you genuinely truly want something, uh, that will that thing will never come by way of how tos and prescriptions and hacks and so forth. Those things lead only to a very uh, base level introduction uh, to something that is very complex. Yeah, and um, <laughs> one, one, a great example along the lines of what you're saying was um, you once said that if if this whole like how to industry would work, you could you could put this advice like for instance in a bottle and give it to someone else, and they also will be like rich or insert anything like like being ripped or uh, like be amazing at dating or something. And um, or you also once said that um, if the whole like how to industry would work, like um, the most people that are consuming this whole content and the whole how to stuff, like where has it led them, right? Like most people are, are going nowhere with all this advice they are getting and with all the books they are reading and with all the content they are consuming and stuff like that. So well, and the and the, and the assumption there is that they really want to get somewhere. <laughs> that's a that's that's a very that's a very big assumption because yeah. the the truth is most don't want to get anywhere and there's nothing right about that and nothing wrong about that it is just the truth yeah yeah you, you also say that that most people are like unserious about most things right so um yes let let's talk about rules because i also know that you like to say that where there are rules there cannot be the truth so um i think like the whole how to industry is also built upon like rules and don't do this do that so could you also please speak to that those are just more prescriptions wherever there's conditions wherever there's rules there can't be truth because rules and conditions are based upon false ideas that society itself creates mm. And those do's and don'ts are centered around dogmas that are conditioned, like morality and uh, th these things and fairness. And these things have no meaning. Good and bad, um, right? Yeah. Good, good and bad, right and wrong, correct, <laughs> incorrect. You know, these are these are all societal creations. Uh, so those cannot be the driving tenets of every of anything. Uh, where if you if you handcuff someone then you can only lead them in a direction uh, that those handcuffs will allow. And uh, that, that's a preformed path. So it's, it's kind of like those cars that travel on tracks at amusement parks. You know, they can't, they can't drive on the real road. They can only drive on the tracks that are provided to them. So that isn't, there's no, there is no path for truth that involves conditions up. and rules. Great example. Um, I love this episode already. So um, let's switch gears a little bit. So um, one of my biggest entrepreneurial like aha moments where when I, uh, I realized 
that um, all business problems are people problems. And I read that uh, I read this in one of your blog posts. So um, could you please speak to that? Yeah, at the end of the day, there are no business problems. Um, really, everything is a human problem. Where, wherever there's a human, there's a human problem. There really is no problem that's independent of being a human being. Everything is related to personal interaction. Everything is related to how one feels about something. Everything is related to what the outcome is compared to what the desire for the outcome was. Everything is related to the inner conflicts that occur within a human being in his mind. That's where all the problems are. All the outward mm -hmm. manifestations of those things are called business problems or sports problems, <laughs> but they're not. Nothing is really an industry-specific problem. It just presents as an industry-specific problem, but fundamentally, once it's unpackaged, it's a human problem. Yeah, and, and it goes along with the same thing that you like to say. It, it's not always about the thing itself, right? That's right. The thing is never about the thing. And it, this was also like a very big aha moment for me. So, um, yeah. So what would you, because like my audience is like mostly made up of, of, of young people who are, who are starting a business and um, who are trying to figure this whole entrepreneurship, uh, inter entrepreneurship thing out. So um, do you, I know <laughs> I, this is probably a bad question, but um, because I know you are not a big believer in advice, but do you, would, do you have like any words for them, like for, for our listeners who are like starting a business, like find, trying to find their voice in this world and, and stuff like that? Do you have like an, any words for them? Like forget about advice, okay? So, <laughs> but do you have like anything to say to them? You know, I have nothing to say to them as far as what to do. Okay. Uh, I can only tell you that the sky is blue and rain is wet. <laughs> and that if you do things according to the way things truly are, then you will, um, it'll be relatively smooth sailing for you. You certainly will uh, run, run into some rough seas from time to time, but you will avoid an enormous host of problems. Uh, if you if you do things according to purity, if you do things according to uh, what you really want to do, as opposed to chasing rewards and chasing money and chasing outcomes, um, and it, it must be and don't take notes on that. It it, it must be <laughs> it, it it must be understood that uh, there is nothing wrong with chasing money. There's nothing wrong with chasing success. There isn't anything wrong with anything. It is just that when you chase those things, they tend to lead to places that you don't want to be. Uh, when you pursue things from the standpoint of the thing itself, that isn't a good thing to do that. It is just that if you do that, you tend to avoid lots of problems. Mm. And um, I think that like what you once said that um because it goes uh it it, it fits to this whole theme of uh the current uh it's like this this episode because you once said that um like everything in in the society is a scam what we've talked about but also that um i i lost my train of thought here so <laughs> so um uh i have here uh i also wrote down that you um Uh, let, let's speak about like meditation. So um, I know this is like one of your, your favorite topics that meditation and silent retreats is a big scam. And I also know that a lot of young entrepreneurs and I like in this whole uh, meditate like five minutes a day and 10 minutes a day or 20 minutes a day stuff. And um, I think it's also like a scam. So could you please speak to that for everyone who who doesn't know your opinion about like this this whole like meditation and silent retreat thing and this whole game of like how lo how long are you meditating and and stuff like that it doesn't the question is not really should one meditate or should one not meditate okay. that isn't that isn't that isn't the question it, the question isn't is meditation a good thing or a bad thing There is nothing at all wrong with meditation, and meditation certainly has its benefits. The yep. question the question relates more to what is it that you are really seeking? And whatever that thing is, will meditation be the vehicle that actually leads you there? That's the question. If you are seeking 
um, some physiologic benefit and to have so a calm, uh, some calmness during the day, during pockets of the day and, and those things. There's nothing wrong with meditation. There's nothing wrong with it at all. I'm not here to demonize meditation. I am only saying that it it is described as a panacea. Yep. It is described as something that takes you to places where it simply doesn't take you. Um, so it, it it depends upon why you, why it is that you are doing something. But human beings, being human beings, they tend to bastardize everything they touch. You know, they they whatever they touch, they ruin. Uh, whatever they touch. They turn into a competition, and you know human beings are not pure. They 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 do things for ulterior motive. They do things for personal gain. They do things in order to brag to others that look how much I'm doing. They do things <laughs> they, they they do things to add labels to themselves to say I'm a good meditator and I'm a very spiritual person. And so that given that that's the habit of human beings, it is virtually certain that whatever they pursue will be bastardized. It will be done for purposes that are far more in line with the cosmetics than with pursuing that thing towards truth. Uh, so th- I'm not demonizing meditation. Yeah. I look at it I look at it from the standpoint of does it get you to where you want to go? And if if meditation provides you with a benefit, and that benefit is satisfactory to you, then there is no reason that you should ever stop meditating. It makes no sense to stop. Uh, it is it is just what is where is your where is your end point? Where do you want to go? Uh, I think all things must begin with the end. The end creates the beginning. The beginning does not create the end. Yeah, and um, I think like like you said, like most young people are also like in every age group um they meditate for like like cosmetic reasons like um they try to be like more successful and now they start to to meditate because they want to be like more successful but i get but i guess like if you want to be more successful or, or, or like grow your business or have make more money um meditation won't help you get there right so uh it, it's like really well, everything everything turns into a buzzword And yeah. Because human beings are prescription chasers, they will say, "Oh, I will. I, I've heard of meditation, so let me let me add this to my list of things to do." <laughs> And I've heard that I should go for a walk. Let me add this to my list of things to do. And I've heard that I've I've heard that about good morning routines. So let me add these things too. And so they become just a bunch of list followers. And and so that that nothing not nothing really happens that way if you examine. Anything that a person becomes world class at, anything that he truly bec- comes to own, it never happens by list following. It never happens that way. So, so when when things are pursued in that manner, then meditation is perfectly useless um, because the crux of the matter, uh, the roots of the actual issue at hand, have not been touched. It mm. is just it is just another going for a walk. Is there anything wrong with going for a walk? Of course not. There's nothing wrong with anything. It is just, will it take you to where you want to go? And in order to ask that question, one must first ask the more fundamental question, where, where is it that I want to go? Kapila, <laughs> I, 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 I love your insights and um, yeah, your knowledge. So um, could, you, could you please speak to... to um to this whole like folks who are saying like be present and and live in the moment and and stuff like that so because because i think that everyone is currently like sprouting this nonsense on social media that that one should be like present and and more grateful and <laughs> could you please speak to that yes i mean all all these things sound nice and <laughs> and and in in their most rawest form, they're correct to live in the moment and to be present, of course. But I mean, the, you're not going to become a Buddha by reading a bumper sticker. <laughs> I mean, you're not going to become present by because someone told you to become present. And so, so you have this, you, you have this eons old machinery called the mind, which interferes with you at every part of the day. And it, It speaks to you thoughts that you don't want to hear, and it and it never quiets. Uh, 
Uh, it talks to you in your dreams. It talks to you as you're doing your work. It talks to you as you're exercising. It talks to you at every minute of every day. Uh, so, so you're just going to say, be present, and the mind is just going to lie down on the floor and acquiesce to you and say, okay, well, <laughs> since you since you read a Twitter post that said be present, um, then and you read a five step plan that said be present, be mindful, live in the moment, that I'm just going to just go away and die for you. I mean, th- these things once again, it's more it's more empty drivel. It's it's just <laughs> nonsense. Um, you know, Buddha spent seven years in a forest drinking his own urine, uh, trying to become present. Did it work? He didn't work for him. And he meditated a lot longer than your 20 minutes a day. So, <laughs> uh, so let's, let's, you know, if, but, but, but even saying these things is of little use because chances are that the people who are listening to this podcast are among the masses. And there might be one, maybe one, Who's even going to have the DNA to have something to to, to have something get into him, you know, to mm-hmm. to really imbibe what the truth really is? Um, so it so there's no point in sitting here trying to convince people that bumper stickers and Twitter messages about being present um, <laughs> are not are not going to work, because quite frankly, um, the number of people who are really seeking for something to work is very small. Yeah. Yeah, you you also like uh, like 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 uh, gave, gave in, in other interviews a few examples along the lines like um, z- z- all those sayings like don't be angry and 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 or be more happy and stuff like that. It's also like complete nonsense. And after I've heard you speak about this, I was like, man, this dude is so right. All those common little sayings are like lies and and complete nonsense so <laughs> um let, let's talk about like patience because i think like a lot of people especially the old folks are trying to to say to to us young people like be more patient and 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 patience and uh, everyone is speaking about patience and When I heard you speak uh, about patience, I was like instantly, man, this whole patience thing is bullshit and patience is a scam. So could you please speak to uh, about patience? Quite frankly, uh, it's precisely when one is impatient that he really gets somewhere. Because when one is, when one is <laughs> yep. impatient, he is truly driven. He can't wait to get to that thing. Um, I think patience uh, is a is an idea that comes as a result of the tendency of human beings to seek reward. And wherever a person is really hungry for the reward, then uh, the society's response is, well, be be patient. Um, but If someone if someone does something for the reward, uh, then it doesn't matter if they're patient or impatient. It still is going to lead to a lot of problems either way, uh, mm. because if they're if they're patient, they're biting their tongue the entire time, uh, waiting for the reward, and that's going to lead to anxiety. If they're impatient, they're going to chase every rabbit in in the distance. And that's in, in exchange for that reward, and that is going to cause anxiety. So, patience or impatient, be patient or be, it doesn't matter. It is, it is, it just so happens that when someone is truly desirous of something, the natural result of that is impatience. Impatience. And yeah. impatience. And I, and I'm, and I'm not prescribing impatience because that would be that would be a scam as well because then someone would try to be impatient and they would it's, it's about understanding i mean if someone is really hungry they're not going to be patient <laughs> yeah, right? true. if someone if a person is walking through the desert and truly wants water they're not going to be patient if they if they <laughs> see if they see a lake in the distance um even if it ends up being a mirage they're going to run top speed to that lake they're not going to be patient Uh, so the things that human beings truly want actually creates impatience, uh, and impatience is sort of a a hair on fire situation that does get people somewhere, but that isn't prescriptive. It isn't that someone says, "I think I will now be impatient." Yeah, it it, it doesn't work like that, and that's why uh, how truths are like bullshit. 
Um, one thing, to be honest, like one thing in your work, I didn't quite understand. So you always like to say that you arrive before you arrive. Could you please explain this to me? People usually know what the outcome of something is going to be before it happens, uh, if they're truly aware inside themselves. Okay. Um, you, you, you kind of know inside if you're truly going to get somewhere or not. And the outward things that you do are a manifestation of that knowing or of that not knowing. A person who does not know if they're going to get there or not will function by way of anxiety. A person who knows that they're going to get there will function by way of natural confidence. Okay. So um, you also like to say that practice is... Uh, that practice is nonsense. And I think that like, that goes also like completely against the grain because like everyone is telling us like you have to practice, practice every day. And if you don't practice hard enough, someone else like <laughs> the whole competition thing, right? Like someone else is, is working harder than you. So <laughs> could you also speak about like practice and yeah. Practice is once again, it's, it's done as an external medium in order to achieve something. Like and this, anything, uh, and, and any, anything that is done just by movement of the limbs, because movement of the limbs will get you somewhere, is just exercise. It's nothing more than that. Uh, it's, it's just prescription again. Now, if, if someone is truly desiring to get somewhere, will they practice? Absolutely. They will practice for thousands of hours. Um, but the quality and the source of that practice is much, much different than just practice and the idea of hard work and striving. These are all behaviors that are the natural result of insecurity. These are the behaviors that are the natural result of anxiety. These are the behaviors that are the natural result of fear. Fear that if I do not do it, Someone else will get it before I do. And when that is when that is the the avenue, when that is the approach, it is always the false approach. It is always an approach that will lead to more problems because it isn't pure. It doesn't come it it is a reaction to fear. It is a reaction to insecurity, mm. uh, trying to outwork the other. Um, that just leads to uh, nothing but a nothing but endless struggle. And human beings have been taught. Then you see all the all the falsehoods have been taught, and then whatever someone feels during the falsehoods, those have all been excused away as well. So uh, when someone, you know sort of goes down the path of hard work and anxiety and so forth and striving, you know, the, their society teaches them, well, struggle is good. Yeah. Struggle is the way it's supposed to be. <laughs> and, you know, so everything is completely, totally, in, almost evilly bastardized. The human being should have to struggle through life. Um, that, 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 isn't, that isn't truth. That is that that is the natural struggle is the natural cause of anxieties, fears, and insecurities. So the the approach is to find the cure by finding the source of the anxieties, the fears, and the insecurities. the The answer is not to accept struggle. Mm. Yeah, and and and. It's, I love this so because it goes like completely against the grain what all those all those people um, like business gurus and, and, and stuff like that what they are saying that that you have to struggle you have to to give blood and tears and you have to work hard and yeah well, well and and it, things that are outwardly seen does not mean that they are true. You might have two people, and both of them are giving blood, sweat, and tears. One of them is doing it by way of prescription because he feels that he has to do it because the other guy might beat him. The other guy might be doing the exact same thing, but that is the natural result of him having to do whatever he needs to do to master his craft. So outwardly, 
outwardly both of them will appear to be giving blood, sweat, and tears. And that would be factually true. However, because human beings don't look at things deeply, they don't look at things beyond the surface level, that will just be documented as blood, sweat, and tears, then put it on a poster, and then hand it out as brochures in the parking lot. <laughs> it is the source of where those blood, sweat, and tears came from. It wasn't that the message was not blood, sweat, and tears. That was the incorrect conclusion. Yeah, and, and, and you will have like totally different outcomes, right, in this scenario that you gave. Yes. I mean, even the person who does blood, sweat, and tears because he's afraid of the competition, he might become successful, but he, he will never leave struggle. 